Hello and welcome to lesson six of Higher Computing Science Database Design and Development. Today we're looking at implementation because we've done all the design. You can see there are some differences here. We've got wildcards, we've got uh, group by, oh, and probably most obvious is aggregate functions. We're gonna to get to those later. Today we're just gonna work with three or more linked tables. This is something that makes it higher level. At National Five, you can only work with two tables. Today, three or more. I have a database, it's linked in the description. So download it if you want to follow along. It's in Microsoft Access format. Apologies if you don't use Microsoft Access. If you do, that's perfect. If you have access, but you haven't used it before, I highly recommend watching the NAT5 series on databases. It shows you all the basics, how to create queries and things like that. I definitely recommend watching that before you continue with this. Speaking of this, this database, if we go to database tools, relationships, you can see it's got four tables. You can see the tables on the left as well. This is how these tables are linked. It's very similar to the NAT5 tables we had before. We've got dogs who have owners, but this time the dogs can go on a walk and they're taken by a walker. We've got lots of data. We have 491 dogs, 300 owners, there are 50 walkers, and there have been 10,000 walks. Lots of walks. Now, in case you're wondering, all of this data is fake and the database itself is not, it's not a realistic database. If you had a dog walking business, I wouldn't recommend storing all the walks information like this, but it is a good example for learning SQL. So let's get to it. The first thing I want to find is the names of all walkers who have walked any of Rhonda Deer Love's dogs. Now, if you've done National 5, you'll know that it's a bad idea to use a person's name as part of a query, because what if there are two Rhonda Deer Loves? Let's go to the owner table. Let's just sort it by surname. This will make it easier to find Dear Love. Let's scroll down. Here's Dear Love. You can see there are no other Rhonda Dear Love. So we would actually be safe in using the, the name Rhonda Dear Love. But what if there were two Rhonda Dear Loves? Which one would it want? In that situation, you would want to know the ID that you're looking for so that you're sure it's the correct person that you're querying. So this query, we need to find the names of all walkers who have walked any of Rhonda's dogs. Let's do it. We need to create a query and we want to do it in SQL view. Get rid of the semicolon. And what we want to find is the names of the walkers. If we look at the relationships here, we can see all of the tables and all of the fields or the entities and attributes. It doesn't specify whether it's a forename or surname or both. So if it just says name, I like to include both. So forename and surname. Forename, surname. We're selecting the forename and the surname from the walker table. But because it's about Rhonda Dearlove, who's an, a dog owner, we also need the owner table. But these tables aren't linked directly. They're linked indirectly by two other tables. So in order to identify the walkers who have walked Rhonda's dogs, we need to include these tables to create the link. So let's include them. A walker goes on walks, as do dogs, and dogs have owners. We have a where. Now again, we could use the name because in this case, the, the name is unique, Rhonda Dearlove, but personally, I prefer to use the ID. So even though it asks for Rhonda Dearlove's dogs, I'm gonna use her ID. So the ID is 81. So it's where owner ID equals 81. But if I run this, it's, well, first of all, it'll give me errors. And it, even if I didn't have errors, it wouldn't give me the right results. So the error at the moment is the specified field name, forename, could refer to more than one table. So what that means is you can see that forename exists here, but it also exists in the walker table. So owners and walkers have names. They also have surnames. So it's not sure, Microsoft Access isn't sure which table we're referring to. So when we're using an attribute that appears in multiple tables, you must specify the table. In this case, this is the walker's name that we're looking for. So walker.forename and walker.surname. Now, if we run this, Again, the owner ID, which is here, appears in multiple tables. It's obviously in the owner table, but it's the foreign key in the dog table. So we need to fix that as well. Finally, all the errors are gone, but look at this. Now I've been scrolling for a while now, and we're at 59,283. This is the walkers names. There aren't that many walkers. There's only 50 walkers. How are we seeing 59,000 names? more than, and in fact, I haven't even finished scrolling. There's probably hundreds of thousands. Now, the reason for that is because we haven't linked, we haven't joined, or we haven't said where these tables are joined. 
So what SQL does is it, it basically multiplies all of the records or the number of records by each other. So we're getting the number of walkers by the number of walks, multiplied by the number of dogs, multiplied by the owners. So that's why we're getting many thousands, many tens of thousands of results. So to fix this, all we do is we create the joins. So let's just go in the order that they're in here. What links walkers to walks? The walker is linked at the walker ID. So walker.walker .walker ID equals walk.walker .walker ID. And the walk is linked to a dog and it's linked at the dog ID. And finally, a dog is linked to an owner. So dog.ownerID equals owner.ownerID. Let's just double check. Yep, owner ID, owner ID. So let's now try it again. That looks much more realistic, but we've got 79 results. 79 results? How many walkers are there? There's only 50 walkers. So why are we getting 79 results? That's because some of these walkers have walked the dogs of Rhonda Dearlove multiple times. So if we sort this on forename, we'll see that Alice or Alice, Alice, has done four walks for Rhonda and Bertie's done three. And you can see Dookie, is that how you say it? <laughs> All these names are fake, by the way. But you can see that we're getting lots and lots of results because we've got repetition. We've got lots of repetition. So we could say, well, it doesn't matter. We've got the right results, but let me introduce you to something that really is at higher level. And that is the group by keyword. Group by. And what group by does is it condenses any repeated values into a single row. So we could group by the walker name. If I were able to run this, which I'm not, but if I were able, it wouldn't work anyway because I'm only grouping by the forename. But what about all those repeated surnames? So I need to group by the surnames too. And in fact, if I try to only group by one of the fields, it won't let me. So if you group by anything, you have to group by everything as long as it's not part of an aggregate function, which we'll get to later. So let's group by walker.surname. And now you'll see that we no longer have that repetition. So if you only want to see a person's name appear one time, group by the name, and you can see that we now have a more reasonable number of dog walkers. 37 individual dog walkers have taken Rhonda Deer Loves Dogs out. Now I think that's enough of an introduction to higher level queries. I hope you've enjoyed this one and I hope to see you in the next one.